At the National Museum of the Pacific War in Fredericksburg, the Garden of Peace symbolizes the friendship between two admirals and peace between two nations. The museum was founded in 1968 to honor Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz in his birthplace and all those who served in the Pacific in World War II. In his early career, Nimitz met Japanese Admiral Togo, a friendship that continued until Togo's death in 1934. He considered himself a disciple of Togo's. He admired his strategy. It was something that they studied when he was in the Naval Academy. In response to Nimitz's contributions to the Japanese in honor of Togo, Japanese admirals and others raised funds to create the Garden of Peace. Douglas Hubbard, then executive director of the museum, was encouraged by President Johnson to initiate the proposal to the Japanese. They were very receptive to helping establish this wonderful, serene park of uh, peace as a symbol of their respect for Admiral Nimitz and as a gift to the American people. Garden designer Take Tora Saito, esteemed for his work in Japan, brought to Fredericksburg a design that acknowledged the two men's friendship and respect. On site, Japanese craftsmen reassembled a replica of Togo's study that they had built in Japan. Like the original, they constructed it with pegs instead of nails. Saito worked alongside Fredericksburg gardeners, many who donated plants from their gardens. In their work, they celebrated a common ground shared by all cultures, a garden to refresh, soothe, and connect to the land and familial history. There are three main elements in the garden. Uh, the elements are the stones, the uh, water, and the plants. The gravel represents the infinite ocean, and the, uh, the stones in the center form islands. Uh, and then it, the pattern is raked to represent waves. We have a circular pattern in the center that uh, represents a water funnel, and that was in the original land uh, architectural drafting and uh, that moves from place to place according to Mr. Saito's request. So we move it around. As we rake, we move it to different areas. The stones on the island and in Japanese tradition are much more important than anything else in the, in the landscape design. The stones with their lichen uh, are uh, representative of tradition and uh, ancestors and age. And uh, when people come into the garden, uh, Mr. Saito said, stop and visit with the stones. That was one thing he'd asked. The shapes of the stones were hand-picked. He said they were like diamonds when he went out in the fields. And uh, here in the area, and actually selected these stones from ranches in the area. The water represents the stream of life and the symbolism of the single raindrop returning to the ocean. The pond is Ishi no Iki, it's pond of one heart or loyalty. And that was the friendship and the unity of Admiral Nimitz and Admiral Togo. Water also greets visitors at the garden's entrance. In the Japanese tradition, you were to go and uh, purify your, your thoughts, your, uh, your hands of earthly uh, work, and, uh, uh, and your mouth from, uh, from possibly having said bad things about people uh, in an effort to come into the garden with a pure spirit. In planting, Mr. Saito gave Japanese style to Texas bread and adapted species. He chose foliar textures and colors to correspond and to play off each other. 
Understory specimens are shaped to make little clouds in the landscape. Mr. Saito wanted each plant to make its individual statement, even while blending with its companions. Along the borders, he planted monkey grass called tiger's whiskers in Japan. The Japanese technique, compact and neat, is labor intensive. We try to maintain the garden in the traditional style that Mr. Saito requested. Karen spends hours with the pruners to maintain structural serenity and a sense of order to each plant's commitment to the garden. Since the garden was once a horse corral, the plants are very energetic. On a return visit, Mr. Saito saw how his infant plants had matured. He was amazed at how large the garden had gotten. He also saw that his design held true to invite visitors to encounter a new experience and discovery at every step. Mr. Saito accented with pagodas and lanterns that represent different periods in Japanese history. They didn't want to do what they called Japanese-ism in that they didn't want to have too many elements. They wanted it to be a very traditional and elegant blending of Japanese tradition rather than just plopping up pagoda here and say, no, this is Japanese. Many visitors to the Garden of Peace were born long after World War II. But from gardeners to students of history to romantics proposing marriage, the rhythm and harmony of Mr. Saito's garden is a legacy to unite every generation. It's a wonderful balance for this being the National Museum of the Pacific War to have the peace that came afterwards really be a visible spot here.